Can everyone see me, hopefully? Yes. Hopefully nothing's uh, <laughs> dropping out. Um, yep, yeah, good, good. Um, so what we're gonna, I'm going to talk about first is some of the uses that we have for lemons. So I just got grabbed some lemons. My lemons on my tree in particular are not yet ready, um, but some lemons are, some lemons aren't. Winter is generally the biggest um, sort of glut of lemons. And um, so uh, th that's when we get most of our lemons. However, that's not when all lemons are available. So some lemons have a sort of a specific window of about three months where they, they ripen and others have fruit all year round. Like the Eureka has um, fruit all year round. Um, these guys, um, one was from a friend, one's from a supermarket. Um, when we're looking at lemons um, from a supermarket, one of the differences is often they are waxed or they have been washed. And so some of the rind um, has been, um, like it looks a lot smoother. Doesn't really matter if there is stuff on the rind, if you're going to be using just the juice, if you're going to be using the rind in your cooking or whatever, just make sure you give it a bit of a scrub and um, before you use it and it'll go yellow again. Um, sometimes you might have a little um, scale or uh, mildew on it and that can all be washed off. So the rind is actually really, really important because, um, oh, where did I put it? I've lost it now. It's in my, was in my pocket. Which pocket? This pocket, maybe? Yep. Um, what we can do with the rind is we can actually make essential oil. And the essential oils are really good for so many things, from everything from cleaning through to um, helping us concentrate in um, exams and in our jobs and in our work. We can um, use that use lemon essential oil for those things so that all comes from the rind of the lemon now if you're going to be using a whole lemon um, for cleaning what you can actually do is literally rub the rind on say sticky residue if you've got little kids that stick stickers everywhere and you can't get them off rub a lemon on it and it can help remove that stickiness same if you've got band-aids stuck you know and you know the sort of outline of the band-aid that's the sticky stuff that never comes off Grab yourself a lemon and, <laughs> and rub on that spot and it will help get that sticky residue off. Or you can use, if you've got um, lemon essential oil, you can use that straight up as well. Just note that if you put it on your skin either way, that your skin's a little bit more sensitive to the sun for the next day. Um, so when we're cleaning, some other things we can do with it, we can use the juice as a natural bleach. So if you've got clothes that are not as white as you'd like them to be, you can use it as a brightener for that. So you can juice in a bucket of water um, with, your, with whatever soak you want to put in there, some bicarb maybe. Um, soak that for an hour or so and then put it in the washing machine and let it dry in the sun. So this UV from the sun can actually help brighten our clothes and whiten our clothes too. Um, you can use um, lemon juice and salt um, to clean metals, um, not plated metals, but things like copper and brass and um, your, your sink as well. You can use that to polish it. Um, and if you've got stains on your clothes, like sweat stains or rust marks or those sort of things, you can use lemon juice and salt as well as a um, um, to get those stains off. So lemons, the humble lemon can go do a lot of stuff for us. And um, it's one of the kind of bit forgotten things I think sometimes of how powerful some of the the products we have from nature are in our everyday lives um what else we're we going to talk about so that's how you how to use lemons so when we're growing lemons there's a few things that um quite often uh, a few issues that people come across and I'm just going to go through a, a couple of them and then we're going to go over and pop over and have a look at our um our lemon tree and our other citrus trees here at the garden. So the garden, I just say the garden here, we've, Joanne has been very lovely and come every now and then when she's able to, to come and just check the garden. We've pretty much not done a lot since <laughs> for this whole season um, that we have not been allowed here. Um, so it's run itself pretty much. So I just want you to, when we're going around, think about that and say, oh, wow, that's gone really well. Or, you know, I see there's a little bit of tidying up to do in some areas as well. Um, so one of the most common issues with citrus in general and lemons is yellowing of the leaves. And so this can happen. There's, you, you can think about lemons as a little bit of like your sensitive friend. 
just little things can really irritate them. Um, and so yellowing of the leaves is a sign of stress in some way. So that could be, um, I don't know if you can hear me over the lorikeets. They're like both sides of me and all around. They're loving today, <laughs> loving the, the blossoms in the gum trees. Um, so yellowing of leaves, um, one, it can be, it's too cold. Now in Melbourne, we haven't had a, a really cold winter. We haven't had many frosts. And so it's usually when the temperatures get under zero degrees that, um, that you can see yellowing and sometimes leaf drop as well. So they just like lose all their leaves from cold weather. We haven't had a lot. So uh, I'd be, no, I'd probably put that on my lower list um, this year of, of why, if you're getting yellowing of the leaves that it is. Um, one of the most common things is a mineral imbalance or a mineral deficiency. So there's actually 16 different minerals and um, nutrients that our citrus trees need to thrive. Um, and the most, the four, oh, there's kind of five common ones that they are deficient in. And the first one that is nitrogen. So if they're nitrogen deficient, the old leaves will start to go yellow. Okay, so they're usually closer to the base because they're the oldest and uh, oldest leaves. Um, and you'll find that all your new leaves are green and they're all good, but the older ones are yellow. And that's often a nitrogen deficiency. If you've got a zinc or iron deficiency, this one's really interesting. It looks really pretty. <laughs> is what happens is the um, the leaves they go yellow, but the veins of the leaf, so the where the stem comes up the middle and the little lines that go out, all of the veins, they stay green. And so it, it looks it looks kind of pretty, but it doesn't look healthy. Um, so that and that can often be an iron or a zinc deficiency. The third one is um, is magnesium deficiencies, um, and magnesium deficiency kind of look like blotches of light green or yellow. You know, like the leaves just don't look quite uniform in colour, and they look lighter than they should be. They're not like a deep, bright green. So that's often a magnesium deficiency. And the other one is manganese, which um, is, is not as common as those and that again usually yellowing up the leaves or completely so if you have some of these issues so if you actually um and if you you grab a leaf and google's got some really good like take leaf and then go you know um, just type in um mineral deficiency or yellow leaves of citrus trees and then you'll be able to find a leaf or two pictures of them that look similar to your leaf and you can kind of give yourself a little bit of a diagnosis there of what, what um, deficiencies your tree might have. So if you do have a deficiency, you can get a um, specific um, fertilizer that will bump up that, that single thing or you can get an overall citrus food. If, you're, if you think yours is deficient in mag, um, magnesium, you can use Epsom salts about a teaspoon in two to three liters of water. So not very much. We don't want to over salt them because that can burn the roots. Um, you can use that as a fertilizer for um, magnesium because Epsom salts is, is a magnesium sulfate. And so that you can use that. And Epsom salts is um, bath salts as long as you haven't got, you know, fragrances and other, other bits and pieces in it. This is what I use on all my citrus food. This is Harry's citrus food this is what I use on my citrus trees I should say um, and this is a, um, a fertilizer that is designed specifically for citrus because they do have a different nutrient profile to a lot of the other trees um, you can have I'm not going to read it all out there's all your percentages there um, starts with nitrogen and phosphorus um, potassium, magnesium, calcium, sulfur, iron, zinc, copper, and all the rest of them. So, um, and only little bits like manganese, which I said, yeah, it's important, but there's, there's, you know, one point, uh, let me see, 1.4 grams per kilogram. So we don't need much of it, but it has to be there. And it's just like our bodies, you know, there's some things in our, um, some nutrients and actually most of these minerals are what we need too. We don't need them. We don't need to be eating, you know, copper wire or anything, but we do need copper in our, in our body for systems to run. So um, making sure that we've got this, um, like, so I use this um, at least every couple of, um, uh, so every couple of months over winter, they're not growing. You don't need it. You, you can grab this from 
um, the garden feast down at on Station Road. Um, there's a big um, like this is the five kilo version. If you've only got one or two um, citrus trees, you can get the one kilo bucket as well. Um, and um, yeah, every so over winter you don't really need to apply it. And then when they start, like now you'll start see seeing new shoots and new growth. This is when we need all of this stuff because everything's starting to grow. And then every sort of two months I do it. Um, what does it say? So apply every eight to ten weeks from mid August through to March. So the growth season. Um, is when, is when they're, they're growing. So um, do you just sprinkle it around the base and you want to sprinkle it. Um, if you think of, if you look at your tree and you've got your ball of your tree, um, your leaves go out to a certain distance, your roots are going to go out to approximately the same space as what's above. So um, if you've got a huge wide tree, you've got to make sure that you spread some of these nutrients around that whole base. If you've got a tall, narrow tree, keep it in that small um, small ring around the tree and don't go right up to the trunk because we can get um, burning of the trunk as well. So that's feeding. Um, one of the, so, so that's yellowing of the leaves. The other thing for yellowing of the leaves is the pH of the soil. Now the pH needs to be somewhere between six and seven, so fairly neutral. We don't want alkaline soils for citrus and that can make um, what can happen when your soils are too alkaline is that all these nutrients we've just been talking about are bound up in uh, molecules that the trees can't access. So even if they're there, they can't actually utilize it. It's in a form that's, that's um, not compatible with their, their um, root system. So when, when it gets too alkaline, and that is an issue in some areas around here, that you'll have alkaline soils, you will see that your leaves will go more yellow more quickly. Um, and so you need to reduce the pH. Um, and um, I, I can't remember the product off the top of my head. Again, go, go down to um, Garden Feast and they'll be able to give you the right um, uh, thing, uh, products to actually be able to um, work out your pH of your soil. Um, and there's a little pH soil kit you can get so that you, can, you just pull up a little bit of soil, um, mix it into a paste, and then you look at the color of, that it turns with, a, with an agent. And then you can tell whether it's alkaline, acidic, or nice and neutral for, for our um, trees and plants. So the second thing is looking at leaf drop. And this is where, you know, oh, wow, my tree's going really well. And then like often even almost overnight, they're all on the ground. Um, and so, as I said before, cold weather can do that to them. So if it get if they almost freeze, so they're not, they're not super, they're not made for cold weather. <laughs> um, there are hardier varieties, um, but not all of them are made for cold weather. Um, mineral deficiencies that we just talked about, um, pests and disease. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about it, a couple of most common ones that we have around here in a minute. And the last one is over watering. So citrus do not like to have wet feet. Their roots will rot and so will the collar around the stem. And so what can happen with, um, with that is when you get rot, it actually basically um, uh, gnaws into the protective bark. Like the bark is a protection for the, all of the inner workings of the tree. And if you get rid of that, then it, it, get, it has an entry for disease and um, fungi and all sorts of things. And, and so we want to keep, make sure that we don't get um, root, uh, collar rot, which is around the base of the tree, but also not root rot either, which is too much water sitting in the soil. And we need to be really careful of that in Wyndham because we have quite clayey soil. So our soils do hold on to a lot of water. So we want to make sure that we are not over watering our citrus. Um, if you've got them in a pot, if the soil feels moist, that's okay. You don't really need to water much. Um, and then you can give them like a flush. Don't sit them in a, bu a bucket of water or anything like that. Um, so that's the leaf drop. Someone just asked, how do you correct the pH of your soils? Um, there is um, basically salts that will either make your soil more acidic or more alkaline. And I, I'm not going to say which one it, ones they are because I can't remember which way they go. So like there's a lime that I, that makes it go one way and then salts that can make it go the other way. Um, make, just, just talk to um, 
someone at um, either Bunnings or the Garden Feast. Actually, I don't even know if you can talk to Bunnings at the moment. I don't know. Um, but um, yeah, if you give, just give a call to Garden Feast, they'll be able to tell you, yeah, my so if you say my soil is alkaline um, or the pH is above seven, um, so that's the alkaline side, and they'll go, oh, yeah, you need this sort of um, this sort of product to bring it down, um, back down. May, uh, maybe a sulfate. I'm, I'm just not going to say 100% because I haven't got it in front of me. I don't want to tell you the wrong thing. The other thing is you can go onto Google and say, how do I make my soil less alkaline or more acidic? Um, so then we come to the, the, uh, the area of pests and disease because pests and disease can wreak havoc on not only um, the tree itself, but on the produce that we get from it. So diseases um, come in all sorts of forms and usually for um, bits of the tree kind of um, viruses, all sorts of things. There are quite a few, but they're not as prevalent as pests around here. What I would do if you do think you might have a virus or a disease in your tree, take a photo of the picture and and type it into Google what it looks like and a citrus tree. So like um, a mold on my or black spots on my citrus leaves or something like that. It'll give you a kind of a rough idea. The other thing you can do is take a snipping and it's really important that you put it in a Ziploc bag. Do not take um, diseased material into, you know, Bunnings or into a nursery or anywhere unless it's in a sealed bag because we do not want to, you know, spread that disease. It's just not, that's not fair and it's not nice. So um, put it in a Ziploc bag, a clear bag, and you can take it in and go, look, this is what it looks like. Um, help <laughs> and they'll be able to help you out with some of the, the remedies that you might be able to use. In terms of pests, the two most common pests that I see is scale and that where it looks like tiny little flat circles and the scale can go on anything. Indoor plants is another area that um, scale just got, can wreak havoc in. Um, it's little round circles, usually light grey to white um, and but they can be dark as well depending on the, the variety um, and if you rub your thumb underneath them they'll fall off and you'll see um, underneath it's it's kind of a bit fleshy it's they're very tiny they're only like maybe two mils or wide um, but scale can go all through everything and what they do they just put little pinpricks in everything and they start to suck out the juices from the plant not great they don't look pretty. Um, depending on the size of your tree, it can be ho horrific or it might be just mild. And you can brush them off if you've got a really bad um, inf infestation. There's a few um, different products you can use that basically coats them and they suffocate and then they fall off. Um, neem oil, eco neem, there's a few others out there. I try not to use um, any um, synthetic chemicals on any of my produce that we're going to eat because I'd rather have them um, uh, uh, more uh, along the lines of being organic um, just so that we're not ingesting those toxins. Eco neem and neem oil are um, plant-based um, organic products. The other one is citrus leaf miner and this one Again, it's another, oh, sort of pretty until you know what it's doing. Um, and it, it actually almost looks like it's um, squiggling its way along your leaves. The leaves eventually will curl around. Um, and what it actually does is it leaves little little trails. And if you follow that trail, you find a little, a little caterpillar at the end of it. Um, and it's a moth. And those that the leaf miner um, caterpillar, it, it eats away at the leaf, but it also deforms the leaf. And when the leaves are deformed, they can't operate as they should, um, which is collecting sunlight, photosynthesizing, and, and so you can produce your fruit. So if you have just a few, um, you can go and you can literally squish all of the, the caterpillars. And this is the time they're starting to come out. So as the weather warms up, the moths will lay their eggs and the caterpillars will hatch. Um, or you can just remove the leaves and make sure you put them in. Um, you can either kill the, um, the caterpillars by putting the leaves in boiling water and then discarding them in, in the green bin. Um, I'd recommend doing something like that so that we're not then just giving our problem to someone else and you know, it get, they hatch in the, the tip and then they fly back when they're moths and they can fly pretty fast. So 
don't assume it's it's too far away. Um, so yeah, so the the leaf miner is um, curly leaf miner. It'll you you'll see it or citrus leaf miner. Um, you'll see it probably come out soon. Um, I haven't seen any on my trees as yet, but um, the green growth is there, and they like that new green growth um, too. So I'm just looking down my list. I think that's pretty much what I wanted to say in terms of giving you some information. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna go over to our citrus trees and I'm gonna see if I can, got my phone on a stand. Okay, let's go. Um, so we're going to, actually, I don't need my stand right now. Let's just grab you here. So I'm gonna show you around the, um, the community garden. Now, I'm not sure if even everyone online at the moment has actually seen our community garden here at Iramu. So here we've got, um, this is the barbecue area, if you've ever been to Iramu. Um, oops, is everyone there still? Yep, yeah. um, <laughs> incoming call. Um, well, there we go, um, and we're coming around. Um, so we have our, oh, you can't see it from this angle. We have our vertical wall here. Um, and that has got strawberries and beautiful um, flowers all over it. Then we have our um, nine raised garden beds here and around the edge we've got a lot of our fruit trees um, and other trees and we have these gorgeous gum trees that uh, we love and um, have a love-hate relationship with let's just say because they love to suck up our water and uh, they love to drop their leaves. So, so we've got an apple tree here or you can't quite not sure how the uh, the resolution is for you. Now this is our first lemon tree we're coming to here. Um, now this lemon tree, I'm just going to go a little bit closer. I think my foot fell asleep when I was sitting there. Um, so the leaves are slightly yellow, fairly uniform in colour. They're a little bit dusty, but you know that's okay. Got a little little bug here on the the tip. That's all right, he's flown away. Um, we have a couple of little flowers coming in here. So this, um, what I would say, the, the overall, the leaves are quite light green in color. So we, I, we have a, a little bit of a mineral deficiency. I don't know if you guys, can, you won't be able to see through this. There are so many little hoverflies everywhere here. They are loving these yellow daisies. Um, oh, they're not daisies. I don't know exactly what they are, but they're yellow <laughs> flowers. And um, they are loving them. And those little hoverflies are brilliant because uh, they kind of look like a cross between um, a fly and a, a bee. They're striped, um, but they are amazing for doing pollination for you. So they're good ones. Now we've got some little buds coming here. So some, um, some flowers coming along and down a little bit further, the older leaves are actually a little bit greener, which is good. So it looks like that um, we'll give it, a, I'll give it a dose of the, the, the citrus food and then we might give it just to give it a little bit of a boost. Um, we might give it another one in um, four weeks instead of eight weeks. So it's our first lemon tree. This is our lime tree. Now, I'm not even sure if you can see, this is our lime tree here. So it has almost no leaves. It has some new growth here. You can see that there. So we've got some new growth here and we have literally two old leaves and I can see some dead leaves just of, of the lime tree on the, on the ground. So this has had some stress over the last little while. Um, it, it's gonna need some good, a good, um, uh, um, fertilize but also if we have a look around the base some of these plants are coming quite close so we've got thyme here that's quite close and we've got another little daisy really pretty daisy by the way um, here as well purple one it's probably feeling a little bit cramped as well so we'll, we'll clear that away from the base we're going to I'm going to chop off these end bits because if you can see the some of the end bits are just dying back a little bit so what I'm going to do is not just cut off that little bit but I think I'll take it back a bit further just so that the stress isn't on same with these guys I'll cut the, this one back a bit too and then the stress isn't there for this little tree so it's had a bit of a harder winter than our first lemon tree that I showed you and here's our third citrus tree this is another lemon. So the first lemon I showed you was a Lisbon and this one's a Eureka. So we do have a small lemon on the tree. Um, 
it's not, again, it's looking yellow. So the leaves are looking quite yellow, um, the, especially the newer growth. So it, it looks like that we've, we're, again, we've got a bit of a deficiency. Now, one of the things, as I said, about our beautiful gum trees that are right here, um, when they drop their leaves, their leaves can actually, um, they're quite, they're, they're not conducive for growing um, a lot of the, the fruit and veggies that we um, like to grow. So they can actually make condi soil conditions not um, favourable for our citrus trees. So we're gonna, what I'm going to do around here, I'm going to give it a good feed. I'm going to take away some of these gum leaves as well, give it a bit of space um, and we'll give it a feed. And again, I'll feed it again in about a month as well to give it, um, give it that added boost of um, minerals and stuff. Now, some of these leaves will never go green again. Well, what we're looking at is we're looking at the new growth and we want to make sure our new growth is nice and healthy and green. Sometimes, yeah, the leaves just, they'll stay yellow and for um, even if you give them lots of nutrients. We want to look at that new growth and make sure that is um, going really well. Belinda? Yes. Someone asked, can they use sea salt as the fertiliser? Yeah, so sea salt, um, sea salt is not a complete fertilizer. So it's um, more, you might say that's more like a tonic. Um, so sea salt, yeah, it, do, it doesn't have all of the nutrient profile that you need for most plants, I will say as well. So I use sea salt when I'm transplanting plants, so it can help reduce that plant shock. Um, and it's kind of like more like a soil conditioner. Um, so it has some good stuff in there. I wouldn't use it as my only fertilizer though. Um, I'd make sure that you've got either or there's organic fertilizer pellets. So if you don't want to have synthetic chemicals in your, um, in your soil, that's fine. Um, you can do it with an organic fertilizer. You just need to make sure that whatever fertilizer you use has got those nutrients in it that your plants need. Um, you can use compost as well. Um, you, with compost again you need to make sure then once you put it in leave it a couple of weeks and then test your soil ph because your compost could be either depending on what's in it so this flies around my head um either what's in it, it depending on what's in it it can be um quite alkaline or it can be actually a little bit acidic so um when we're adding things to our soil like plant matter is the best by far that you can um, get but again if you think you've got a deficiency it's kind of like with, if you think about our bodies, um, if we're really deficient in something, it's going to be very hard to eat, you know, a kilo of broccoli a day for six weeks <laughs> to get those nutrient nutrients levels back up to where they need to be. So if we give it, the fertilizer is like a supplement so that we can quickly raise the levels of these nutrients and then we can start to work on conditioning that soil and building that soil up. Were, were there any other, other questions? Um, one just came up. I've got a lime tree. I don't know the name. It's a small green one. It flowers and fruits very well. However, because it's green throughout its life, I'm not able to figure out when to harvest it. What's the best time of year to pick them? Limes, you pick them when you need them. So um, once they're sort of a little bit bigger than a golf ball, you know, you'll know the size of your limes. You know, some of them are a golf ball size, some of them are like a little bit, not quite tennis ball size, but, you know, a little bit bigger. Um, it's probably a Tahitian lime. Um, that's the most common lime. If you've just, if you bought it from a nursery, it's probably a Tahitian lime. And, um, yeah, you can pick them whenever. If you leave them on long enough, they will go yellow um, eventually, like, months and months later so um yeah you, once once they're big um like they're a decent size you can start picking them whenever you like and they it, in my opinion if you can leave it on the tree um and it's not going to go off on the tree then that's the best place to store it because um you don't have to put it in the fridge and all that sort of stuff so um yeah uh, is the garden feast open at the moment uh, call you you have to call and then you can do um, pickups and, and that sort of stuff as well. So um, you do need to call them um, to, or, or you can order online either way. But you can, yeah, they're there to call and you can, um, yeah, pick your stuff up yeah. or, or order your stuff and ask some questions and then and then go go in and um, and pick it up. Yeah, I think they've got a little um, 
the little pickup area outside the near yeah. the door. Yeah. Yeah. I rocked yeah. up one day to to get some stuff and went, oh, hang on, sat in the car, quickly ordered it, and then yeah. <laughs> then went and picked it up. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Um. My lemon tree is tiny and has had flowers, but has not fruited. I've had it for three years. Yeah. So fruit drop is another. Um, so it'll flower beautifully and then even sometimes you'll get like marble sized fruit and then they'll all fall off, fall off. Um, and that that's a sign of stress that something's not right that it can't hold on to its fruit um, so again look at your deficiencies have a look at the leaves um, and have a look at there may be it may be a calcium deficiency um, so I would grab um, like the Harry's citrus food or something that's an all-round fertilizer if you're not specifically sure what it what the the deficiency is, and if it's in a, if it's in a pot, you do need to make sure that you're adding nutrients to that because it doesn't have the the um, the ability to like that doesn't have all of the other um, of microorganisms and the soil structure to to have um, the benefits from that. So with a pot, you do need to often fertilize a little bit more. Okay, I have a kumquat tree and all the leaves have turned yellow, but he's still bearing fruit. Thoughts? Yep. It, it, again, it'll probably, it, well, if it's yellow now, I was going to say if it's yellow at the end of summer, sometimes they can get a little bit sunburnt, so they go yellow to, to prevent themselves dying. Um, I don't think in Melbourne we've had enough sun at this stage for that to happen. So um, what we can do though, um, so it's probably a, a deficiency, maybe a minor deficiency. Um, kumquats are phenomenal at fruiting. They're a lot less sensitive than say your lemon trees um, and your orange trees. Um, they, they seem to be a lot more robust and hardy. So um, yeah, it's probably a deficiency of some, some sort. Um, but you've, you've been, you know, a bit luckier that it hasn't dropped its fruit or, or dropped those leaves. So, yeah, give it a good dose of fertiliser. If it's fruiting and the fruit is um, juicy and they are, you know, well, they a little bit tart anyway, but if they taste as they should, um, then, then yeah, keep, just, just um, fertilise it as usual and, um, and, yeah, keep going. Um, I think Brenda sent a picture... Um, I can send a picture. Can you see it? No. Oh, it's just of my lemon tree. So they haven't dropped. They just don't develop. <laughs> okay. Yep. Yep. Um, how long have they been on the fruit on the tree? Oh, I've had the tree for about three years. I want to say it's a miniature something. Mm -hmm. I can't. I think it's either a um, a Lisbon or a Eureka. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. um, and it gets flowers and I think, oh, this is the year it's going to fruit and then nothing happens. It just, I feel like it gets the tiny little bud at the bottom of the flower mm -hmm. and then nothing happens. Yeah, so it, again, it's some sort of stress. So it's, it's okay. under stress in some way. Um, and whether that's a deficiency, whether it's not enough water, whether it's too much water, um, as, as I said, they're, they're very sensitive souls, those lemon trees sometimes. Okay. When, when they get, when you find the right spot for them, you yeah. have a look at some of those old lemon trees oh. around and you just like, there's thousands of lemons. I went to a friend's um, dad's place just here in Werribee. Yeah. This lemon tree was, I'm going to say four metres tall, maybe five metres, I don't know, probably even more than that, five metres tall. It's, it was huge covered in lemons and they're like i said oh can i take a bag and they're like whatever you can reach you can take because <laughs> there'll be more and then i have yeah. a little lemon tree that's like five years old and i've got three lemons that are green and, and they're developing but it's just, this is the first year that it's actually had any fruit um it was a rescue tree because it was in the wrong spot at my mum's place um and it, it kept dropping its leaves it was too it was too wet at their place they live down western district um, but yeah, you see some, once they've, once they've got their roots and they're happy, you know, they're, they're good to go. But when they're, you're just starting, I've got an orange tree that I've tried three different spots and, um, because the leaves kept going yellow and I couldn't do any, like, couldn't, it just, I put it in a pot, it'd go fine, put it in the ground. No, nah. 
So I've found a spot now. I think we're good to go and it hasn't gone green this winter. It hasn't gone yellow this winter. Sorry, it stayed green. But yeah, it's um it's probably a deficiency in some in some respect. I'd um if if you have a look, um, if you know at the stage that those, you know, you said that when they're really tiny they drop off. Um, yeah, they don't drop, they just they, they, I don't know, they don't they're not on the ground. Mm. They just it's like they just don't develop any further. Yeah, yeah. So um, there's a real there was a really good art of better ho- article Better Homes and Gardens did. I think it was like I'll, I'll send it. I'll see if I can send it to Joanne. And that just oh, got, okay. went through through some of these the issues, like the little issues. And and yeah, it's probably a deficiency in in some area. Probably something random as well. <laughs> and maybe yeah. Like, so start with Harry's. Else. Start with yeah. Harry's. Start with Harry's, and it's a really good baseline um that you can that you can then oh, there's mozzies here too um that, that, that you can then work up from as well okay thank you no worries i i with my lemon tree i am sure i had it for about seven years before i got a lemon yeah. off it yeah and now now like i went out yesterday and i've got some yellow i've got some green i've got some little ones the bees are loving it because the blossom's out so mm. they um yeah, like you say, once they find the right place, then yeah. then they go they off. Go for it. Yeah, yeah, my mum had one of those lemon trees that was like four meters high, four meters wide, and we got sick of lemons because there were so many of them. So <laughs> yeah, but um, now uh, my fruit tree gives fruit but does not get filled with it. Mine's not too wet, leaves are green, gets ample sun. However, few leaves are burgundy when growing. Yeah, yeah, no, burgundy when growing is fine. It, there's some varieties that have those sort of really red leaves as they're small and then they go green as they get bigger. That's fine. Um, abundance of fruit, it, it could just be it's a younger tree. Um, again, if, it, if it's fruiting and the fruit are, are there, um, it's obviously got some of all of the nutrients. Fertilising is going to give it more. Um, and when trees have more fertiliser, have more nutrients, they grow more um, because they feel that they have the right condition. It's like, so plants will not um, go all out. They won't do what we do and go all out so, and know we're going to crash. <laughs> um, they, will, they will produce and they will grow with the conditions that they have and with, with the, um, the nutrients available. You give them more nutrients, they're going to do more stuff because they're essentially in their head, their main goal is to produce fruit so that their genetics keeps going. That's 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 the whole aim of that's a plant, amazing. really. Um, is to and when they feel stressed, um, depending on. So if you have a look at things like um, uh, your like bok choy and your lettuces and everything, when they get stressed, they go to flower and bolt because they know that's the way that they're going to to continue to grow um, or to get you know continue on. Whereas with trees. They will conserve their energy, so they might drop leaves. They will, um, they might drop their fruit because they don't think they have enough nutrients to keep going and to actually get this fruit to completion, which is their seed. Um, and so, so yeah, so different, different um, things. Are di- different plants have different stresses and have a different response to stress. When conditions are great. They will produce as much as possible to the limit of the nutrients. So if you don't have enough, if, so you can just add some more um, fertilizer or um, Epsom salts or all those sorts of things to give it more nutrients to give it um, the opportunity to get more fruit. Um, where is the best place to position trees? Do they not like too much wind? Wind is an interesting one. Um, so. When they're little, they the the problem with wind is that they'll get they'll literally get knocked around a lot. So you do need to stake them and stuff. Once they're developed, they're fine um, in wind. Uh, most trees, pomegranates are a little bit iffy about being in wind because if you have a look at the the size of the the branch compared to the size of the fruit, the branches almost look like twigs, and the fruit you know the size of a pomegranate. They're massive, so they don't like to be in wind because you actually just lose your fruit. Um, citrus trees should be fine once they're established. You probably need to. Sorry, I'm trying to kill a mozzie at the same time. <laughs> I'm going to move. Um, you probably need to just give them some support to start with. Um, and it, like, you don't want it to be in a wind tunnel because they just 
they'll, they'll be fighting against that wind a lot. But other than that, they should be fine. Yeah. They can become your, your wind barrier as well. Okay. If there's no other questions, I'm gonna, I'd love to show you a little bit more of the garden here, that's the things that are going really well. Um, yep. So this is our wall. This is the, um, the herb and flower side. This is all lobelia. These beautiful, there's all purple and blues. This, this is really interesting. This one, I, this, this is the same plant. These two are the same. So this is an apple mint. And I have no idea why one side is yellow and one side is green. It's, it's a variegated mint and it's um, called apple mint. And it has this like really fresh apple-y, kind of like, you know, when you um, bite into an apple and there's that apple, that apple smell, it's got that sort of smell to it. Oh, this is kind of, that's what it should look like. But we have one branch that's completely yellow, one branch that's almost completely green. All good. Um, there's a tractor coming, by the way. They're doing the oval. Um, we've got sage here as well. We've got thyme. We've got lemon thyme up here. We've got a couple of strawberries and all sorts of things. Um, and um, down the bottom, we have lots of mint. So if you guys don't have mint, we've got normal mint, you know, the common mint. We've got basil mint, peppermint, chocolate mint and ginger mint so we've got a lot of different varieties of mint and they all have a different just slightly different flavor this is the chocolate mint it's really good as a tea um it has this like almost like a, a, a minty hot chocolate like chopped peppermint sort of flavor um, and ginger mint is really nice this is the ginger mint on the end here really beautiful in fruit salads it gives us a little bit of zing um in the in a fruit salad over summer over here, this so these are our raised garden beds. So we cleared out, um, we did come in on Monday and we cleared out a lot of the, so some of our beans. Um, so these are our um, scarlet runner beans. So the last year's growth had just about gone. You can see this year's growth has just started. So scarlet runner beans, they actually last in the ground for up to seven years. So we've had one year, so we've got another six to go. We got our beautiful chives. Chives is one of my favourite alliums. So the allium family is your onion family, garlic, onion, all of those. You can actually eat these flowers, and they look really pretty. They have the similar flavour to chive, like almost the same, maybe a little bit less um, bitey. Um, and you can put them in salads. It looks really pretty. We've got some radicchio, which is like a bit bit of lettuce there. Um, over here. This is, uh, I love this too. This is chamomile. So it's going to come into flower very soon. Um, and just sweeping your hand over it. If you have any um, like ki kids or adults that are a sensory, this is a really beautiful, um, you just rub your hand over and there's the chamomile calming smell comes over. And the other great thing about this one is that um, each of these little, little um, bits is now a new plant. That it actually roots so it roots in and um, yeah we can grab more plants out of that so we can move that around over here this is our tea garden and it's a little bit overgrown <laughs> as you can see we have lime balm and we have so this is a really good to make like a, a, a tea out of as well we've got lemongrass we've got more chives some lemon thyme which um, goes really well with chicken when you're cooking um, so I, I actually just grab a bunch when I'm making like a chicken soup or a chicken broth, literally rip off a whole bunch and chuck it in the pot. Then we've got lemon balm as well. And the lemon balm is taking over the stevia. So this is the, this is the flowers of the stevia and the rest is in there somewhere. Um, and lemon balm is another really nice one to make teas out of. You might notice that ever, as I go around, there's a lot of things you can make tea out of because I love my tea. <laughs> this is the, another chamomile and this one's just about to flower. Again, the flowers are really, really lovely in tea and they taste totally different as a fresh flower as your dried chamomile tea. These ones actually taste almost a little bit like apple um, in your tea. So it's got this fresh apple-y flavor. So here's, and here's the, another chamomile and you can see there's, it's grown into a lot of different um, plants there. And over here, this is becoming, it was our, well, here's where the pea should be. And this is what happened when it fell over. <laughs> it's like the giants, the, the, the beanstalk has fallen over. So this is a, um, this is a sweet pea. 
And so we're waiting for these to um, dry out and then we can harvest them. So we've got um, uh, seeds for next year. And then this is becoming our raspberry patch. So we've got new um, raspberries coming up all through here um, and they'll start to flower soon. And I would have, I think this one is the autumn fruiting variety. There's a summer and autumn fruiting varieties of raspberries. I'm pretty sure that one's the autumn one. Another little tea over here. Um, and that is, this is, there's lemon bar, a uh, lemon verbena and lime verbena here. Both again, that you can make into beautiful um, tea. And this is our, one of our olive trees. We've got two olive trees here at the garden and we can see our olives are just starting to, oh, another mozzie, um, just starting to develop there. There's some apple trees around the back and everything is just, you know, the, the, rose, the rosemary right here um, has grown. Like this one, you can see, this is the flowers, the winter flowers. And this has grown almost like the length of my forearm this, win this, this spring already. <laughs> so it's going very well. If you ever need rosemary, let us know. We have got a bunch. Belinda? Just got a question about yeah. apple tree. Um, it's flowered and now turned green. So what shall I put in there to have apples oh, on yeah, it? Oh, yeah, go for it. It's a green apple. Yep. So um, if you just get a, a normal fertilizer is fine. Just an organic fertilizer is fine. What you will need to do in, um, so this one, and different apples will be at different stages. So we've got, I'm just trying not to stand on everything right now. This one is still in full bloom. So you can see that really beautiful white flower. Whereas this apple tree close to me, it's lost all its blooms already now. And you'll see, you can actually see the little apples starting to develop. Now, if we have a look here, if I left them all, we're going to get like 10 apples in the space of, I don't know, a large golf ball. They're not going to be very big apples. They're not going to be going to get very many nutrients. So what we actually need to do, give it another. So you can see here, it's not even as big as my fingernail yet. Um, you need to give it another couple of weeks and you'll see that they'll start to swell and this, um, the, like the last of the petals will fall off. And once that happens, what we need to do is actually um, one of the things that I really dislike doing, but I know it's for the good and we actually need to get rid of most of our apples and we need to make sure that we only have one, maybe two apples on each flowering spot. Um, because if we have like a bunch of five or whatever, they're just not going to grow big um, and they're not going to be very free. Like they're, they're going to stay sort of this big um, and you know, take two bites and the apple's gone. So I'd rather have, you know, a few big apples rather than try and have, you know, 20 little apples. Um, so most apples, I'm just trying to, we've got a third apple tree. I can't really get, no, I don't, can't really see it there. Um, but most apples will be at the stage of either about to finish flowering. So they'll be in full bloom or they've just finished flowering. So in the next, yeah, couple of weeks, it'll, some of them will die off naturally and that's fine. But if there's still um, more than two in a bunch, then we need to cut off the small ones. And so if Joanne reminds me in um, a couple of weeks, um, um, probably on the, the 19th or something of November maybe, um, or the 12th, then we can, I can actually show you how I'll, I'll take off some of those, um, the little ones. Um, but you just choose the largest one or two maximum in each bunch and make sure that if there's two bunches really close together, you just do one in each and um, so that they have room to grow and also the nutrients to, to, to be nice and big and juicy. Um, yeah. So yeah, even um, when, when you guys are on a call and you've got a, you know, in a couple of weeks, you go, Hey, you promised <laughs> I'll hold you to it. Just remind me. It, it's not that I don't want to show you. Sometimes I just forget. Um, I've and made one a note. Last... <laughs> oh, excellent. Excellent. I don't have any people with me. Uh, one last, one last note before we go. These are the cutest little strawberries, by the way, these are an Alpine strawberry that we grew. Um, some of them were grown from seed and some of them were grabbed from our friends at Crafting Caffeine. 
they taste like strawberry lollies, like different strawberry flavor. We've still got a few here. We'll keep a few and there's a couple of runners if people would want some. They're beautiful. And also um, to help with our community garden, we are selling um, tomatoes, capsicums and chilies um, here. So that it's um, for a donation, three for five dollars towards it. So d donate towards the community garden. And if you want to grab some of those, there's cherry tomatoes. There's the large like tomatoes, a few different varieties of each. There's a few different varieties of chilies. Um, and so oh, there's a few eggplants, a couple of eggplants here too. Um, yeah, if you want any of those, send Joanne a message. Um, we'll be putting up a post on Facebook as well um, that you can, we can um, we can get them to you. Um, so they're grown in Melbourne. They are now um, hardened off. So they've been outside. So you can see these stems are nice and purple. So they've been hardened off. They're ready to go in the ground. Um, and um, yeah, they've been grown here, so then they haven't been grown in a greenhouse and then shipped down from Queensland or anything. They're not used to warm weather. They've been outside, <laughs> out outside here. So um, they'll be ready in the next. Um, you know, just message us through, and then we can give you a list, um, see what you would like, um, and yeah, that all of the proceeds will go towards um, here at the community garden, getting supplies and and bits and pieces that we need to keep this going too. Linda, um, Brenda just asked, is the thinning out the same for stone fruit, removing some fruit in a bunch on the tree? Yes, yes, to an extent. So I don't thin out my apricot because I, I'm just trying to get away from the uh, the tractor again. It's coming around. <laughs> um, I walked through a spider web. Um, so um, I don't thin out my apricot tree or my cherry trees. Um, my apricot tree... I've watched over the last couple of years, it self thins pretty well. And the fruit that it holds onto um, go, get, gets into that nice apricot size. Um, for my peaches and my nectarines, yes, I thin them. Um, so with if you think of the size of a peach, it's kind of like a, like a good size peach is sort of maybe a tennis ball size. So when you're looking at your peaches growing on a branch, you only want to have a peach developing every tennis ball size spot. So you could, you know, best uh, best case scenario is you have, t you know, tennis ball next to tennis ball, peach, 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 peach. So you want to thin them out so that they can actually grow large um, and so that they can, you know, they, they, the more you have, the smaller they'll be and generally the less juicy as well because they won't have as much nutrients and as much water to get to each piece of fruit one thing that generally happens in the next few weeks is that we'll have a period of no rain and then we'll get a massive storm somewhere usually around the end of october melbourne cup somewhere around there we'll get a big dumping of rain and what happens then if you haven't been consistently watering your trees You'll have just thinned out your fruit beautifully and everything and then this massive dump of rain will come and your fruit tree will go, beauty. I'm going to take up all of this water and your fruit skin won't be able to actually expand as quick as that amount of water and it will split. So that can happen with peaches, apples, tomatoes, um, cherries, pretty much the works. So be really consistent now we've ha had a few days without rain yeah the soil's still moist but i'd still give your fruit trees a little bit of water all the time every at least once a week if not twice a week to make sure that they're this the um they're getting a, a consistent amount of water and they get and the skin can then grow consistently as well beautiful excellent are there any more questions No, Not I really? Think you've, I think you've been able to answer. Well, thank you very much today, awesome. Belinda, for um, no worries. giving us all those tips on our lemon trees. I'm, um, the next session is next 10 o'clock next Thursday. So, um, yes, yeah, 10 o'clock on Thursdays is when we have garden sessions. So um, next week we've got companion planting. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully the weather's nice again 
for yeah i'm loving it yeah <laughs> i do i do it is a bit lonely i will say i'm glad the birds are here <laughs> yes. but when, soon soon we will um we'll be back and we'll be we'll be gardening together um it's yeah. always more fun you you don't get twice as much done with two people you get more than that yeah yeah and and look because um a lot of the restrictions are for outside the garden mm. group could possibly be one of our first groups that's able to to come back so um everyone's more than welcome to come down we've got although we can only have up to 10 so that will will limit us but um yeah right. that'll, that'll be good to have people come down um yeah so thank you everyone for joining us today thank you belinda for all your tips um we'll get that list no, done up with our um items for sale and um and then you'll send me through that was it better homes and gardens yeah. information yep. and then i will shoot it out to everyone that i've got on my my list so um awesome. yeah no worries thank Excellent. you everyone we'll, we'll see you guys all next week will do and as i said at, at the start we've recorded this session so we'll put it up on our youtube page it'll probably go up um i think sometime next week so but we'll do a post post on facebook to let you know that that's going up there so thank you everyone have a great no day um and yeah i'm headed out to the garden now <laughs> <Woo -hoo. See you laughs> okay, thanks week. everyone thanks belinda bye bye